What is going on? You are listening to Tag's podcast, aka Talk About Gay Sex podcast, celebrating six years, almost seven. This is episode 542. I am your host, Steve V, alongside Cody Maurice Stoggett. How the hell are you doing, Cody? Hello, darling. I'm doing wonderful. How are you, boo? I am doing really well as I'm currently on the Vakaya Caribbean cruise. We are cu- currently at port in San Juan, Puerto Rico, which I know you're Puerto Rican. Ooh. And yeah. Yes. So I, I uh, up. short visit here. I might, after the show, get off and check it out. I've been here before, though. It's so great. But the Vakaya cruise so far is so wonderful. It's a lot of the friends that we both met on the Vakaya Mexico resort that you and I did our live broadcast at are all here. So it's kind of a who's who and a back to home week here, which is so great this time on the Caribbean. And besides so many friendly faces, Vakaya really is so reaching out to be inclusive. And you and I had uh, Will Tantra, tantricfitness.com on our show recently of Tags Live. He is here too. And it's been really great bonding with him. They're, Cody, they're doing some workshops on board, tantric workshops that I just think is very educational and mostly lecture, but they are teaching you some techniques and orgasm techniques and so forth. I'm going to try and attend one of them while I'm on board, but really great to see so many fun places. The red light district, Cody, is in full effect. And we've talked about it before, where when we were in Mexico, it was actually on a boat run by Jets Adventures. Shout out to Jet of Jets Adventures. But actually here, it's on, I believe it's on one of the top decks. And it is kind of multi-tiered like they've really it made it very expansive there's kind of planters around it's normally a lounge deck and so Mm -hmm. you can kind of meander around there's slings set up all over the place there's benches where you could get you know pounded on there's little you could walk up to another area people are very respectful but you can i've had a lot of fun i feel like Everybody, I was just walking by a cabin to before I hit record on this episode, and I was, you know how people put bulletins or pictures on their mm-hmm. door? So somebody wrote on, dry, uh, the dry spell is officially over. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what a way to put it out there. <laughs> Good for them. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But there's such a fun sexual freedom that is happening on the Red Light District on this cruise and what Vakaya puts Love out it. there. And when you think about it, they've got great lighting. And because the ship is propelled a lot by steam and we're, we're positioned up on there, you see s- steam coming out. It's almost reminiscent of like a bath house you're outdoors in the middle of the ocean so it's just got that mystique about it and i think people's inhibitions are just definitely lowered and having you know being their free sexual selves and i just really am enjoying it so shout out to this whole amazing yeah you can find out more image if pictures and follow me on my instagram i'll be posting all week long at i am underscore steve v and check that out but yes um super fun and happy to be here so yeah and doing a little bit of work the best time yeah thank you okay let's get into some hot topics and you know, finally, the Census Bureau, Bureau will ask questions about LGBTQ plus people. A lot of people are worrying that the questions will still continue to erase some queer Americans. But after years of pushing by queer activists, the U.S. Census Bureau will finally try to include questions about sexual orientation and gender identity for its American community survey. And currently, the ACS, the Bureau's largest survey, only includes questions about same-sex couples who are married or living Mm. together. 
well, that leaves us out, right, Cody? <laughs> and <laughs> recently, yeah, uh, I want to be counted. Um, as the I know, associated, right? <laughs> yeah, the Associated Press notes that only accounts for an estimated one-sixth of the country's LGBTQ plus population, leaving out transgender people and those who are single like us or who do not live with their parents. Well, in September, the Census Bureau requested permission from the administration, uh, the current administration, to begin including questions about sexual orientation and gender identity for people ages 15 and older. And what does this really mean? A lot of it means that you know, when they have a proper census of who is in our country, they can actually fund certain programs. So think things like our health and all of the concerns um, about our public safety. You're not going to get a lot of funding if you don't have proper numbers to be able to actually disseminate the money to. And so that's why it's really important not just to keep track of people um, it's, it's really for these kinds of things. So respondents will also be asked to identify their sexual orientation, uh, gay or lesbian straight. Um, of course, uh, that is not, yeah. So they'll be asking those questions. Um, I think this is a really good addition. I didn't even know this was a case that they weren't really asking, a full comprehensive questionnaire of all of our community. Did you know this? And do you think it's a good thing or what, how do you weigh in? Yeah, I did not know that that was a thing on the census. I remember filling out the census before and it was more about ethnicity and things of that nature. And so I'm glad that they're expanding how to count people and how to define people because we're so much more than just one thing. So I think that this is a great thing. I agree with you that it needs to be more expansive. This is just the beginning for as far as I can see it. So I think that they just need to do a little bit more so that everybody can be counted and not just people in relationships. They're not the only people that count in this world. So I think that all as long as we are making our voices heard through the census, through what have you, voting and things of that nature, protesting, whatever, what have you, as long as we're doing all those things, we are headed in the right direction. You know, one point of contention was the fact that things like intersex, asexual, and pansexual won't be included as options in the questionnaire. And I think, you know, this is a big step forward and hopefully through education and as, you know, incrementally, it seems... Do you think that we should include some of these other forms of identity? Um, I, I think they could consult more with the community to include some of these things, but I, I just hope it's further down the road. What do you think? Oh, I totally agree. I think that intersex people uh, and all the other things that you mentioned, they are just as important as everybody else and they deserve to be counted. And like you said before, the, the census will help disseminate uh, and disperse money and programs for people that are uh, what we categorize them on the census. So as long as we are, when we're counting them, then we'll be able to provide for them. We'll be able to make sure they have the things that they need in order to flourish and live a healthy life. Yeah. I'm, and while there is criticism for that, even in our own community, oftentimes I'm noticing more articles just within the community educating people on asexual and all of these. There's so many. Aromanticism is a whole nother category of people that Mm. that's how they identify. And so I think we're barely educating ourselves on a lot of the variations of our identities. So we shouldn't, you know, hopefully we'll see more progress come in the name of, of the census down the road. So, Cody, I don't know if you were ever a fan of the Dukes of Hazard back, I believe, 70s or 80s. I oh, certainly Oh, I'm not wasn't. that old. No. <laughs> <laughs> the reruns, baby. No. The reruns. <laughs> Get them. Thank you. <laughs> were you a fan? I definitely was. I used to live for the Dukes of Hazard. I had such a crush on both of them. I wanted that car. The only thing that I didn't want was Daisy. I was like, you can leave her in the background, baby. <laughs> and now you're wearing the Daisy Dukes all the time, I'm I, sure. Showing I'm, that I'm Daisy. Oh, my God. Look at that. <laughs> 
exactly. A better version. Well, I was never a fan of it. And you might not be after hearing this next story, story because John Schneider, the blonde one, if you will, apparently mm -hmm. is a total right winger. And also, if you may or may not know, this has been a country singer for years, but he recently shared his thoughts on artists like Beyonce, which you're not going to like this, who venture into very who venture into various genres with regards to fans urging the Oklahoma country station 100.1 KYKC to play Queen Bay's new country song. Well, that story, actually, she did get her song on country. They actually are playing it now. So kudos to Queen B. But the host of One America News, OAN, asked... The lefties in the entertainment industry just won't leave any area alone, right? They just have to seize control over every aspect, don't they? In which Snyder responded, they've got to make their mark, just like a dog in a dog walk park. You know, every dog has to mark every tree, right? So that's what's going on here. And many people have said John Snyder, is, he's receiving backlash for comparing Beyonce to what, a dog? What do you think about this Ooh. and those, le I mean, that's the story of this piece. What do you think the haters are wow. saying about this? And what do you, what's your thoughts? I cannot stand behind the Dukes of Hazard anymore. This is ridiculous. Why would somebody compare a black artist singing country music, something that black people helped incept that they built themselves, that th it's music that was, originated and was built by black people so why would they have why would he have an issue with beyonce singing country music first of all music is for everybody so i don't understand why he thinks he can gatekeep country music it just is it's ridiculous to me i need for him to go sit down and walk his own dog or get dog walked thank you very much Exactly. And it's almost like telling people stay in your lane when you're a mm -hmm. singer, when you're an artist, you get to sing. Many people fall into the pop genre, but it doesn't mean that they don't like other types of music. You're probably a perfect example of this. You like a lot of as a singer, you can sing all kinds of things. I mean, it's you can fall in and out of various genres and I don't think anybody should feel threatened over you crossing into their lane. And so it's just, it sounds very racist to me and uh, definitely dog whistling. And, you know, they're just being haters because she's, you know, doing so well uh, without the album. It hasn't even come out. And with this first mm -hmm. two songs, she's doing it. And no one likes it when somebody's, successful and heaven forbid in there and i hate to say this in our current state of the world if you know black or brown people are moving up the ladder it's like oh watch out right so i mean yeah that's how i feel i agree with you yeah yeah exactly so it's just gross and um yeah i'm not a fan with it well let's stay in celebrity news because do you know the actor andrew scott Andrew Scott is uh, recently was at the BAFTAs, which just happened over the weekend in London, and it attracted a lot of big name stars uh, for all the movies. Think of it as the UK's Academy Awards. But among them were Andrew Scott and Paul Mescal. Well, they're the Irish actors who are currently in the film All of Us Strangers, a movie that I really want to see. It was up for five awards, sadly walked away with none. But this awkward moment happened on the red carpet which i can't wait to hear what you thought of it um scott andrew scott who is gay was on the red carpet and was quizzed by a bbc entertainment correspondent colin patterson well patterson asked him about another fellow irish actor so didn't really spend much time on the film at hand of the actor he was uh, you know, interviewing, he quizzed, mm -hmm. he was quizzed by BBC entertainment correspondent Colin Patterson and was asked the question about Saltburn and what he thought about Keegan's naked scene in the, the last scene. And hopefully you've seen Saltburn. It's not giving away too much, but it's an amazing scene. We talked about it on this show. You watch Saltburn. You remember that last scene where he's naked oh, and yeah. dancing around to murder on the dance floor. And 
Someone else interrupted and told Scott not to reveal any spoilers, which is true, right? I mean, of course, we're doing it now, right now. But I mean, this is on the red carpet. <laughs> so Scott appeared uncomfortable saying, oh, I won't spoil it for anybody. It was great. Well, the reporter encouraged him to talk more about it. Spoil away, he said. Scott still refused to comment and appears to shrug it off when the reporter then says, there are a lot of talk about prosthetics. How well do you know him? Well, gross. And Scott appeared awkward at the question and replied, I don't know. And then turned and walked away. The video, you got to look it up because it's so weird what? and awkward to not ask Andrew Scott or spend your few minutes that you get. I've done red carpets in the past. I hate them. They're, you really, if you're lucky enough, because of course, certain outlets get priority and when we were doing it when i chose to do it a few times we were a very small online magazine and so you know you mm -hmm. get what you get but you only get a few minutes with these and you need to make your questions count right and so to not ask andrew scott about his movie which he's nominated for or spend the very few minutes that you have with him on his film to ask about a separate film that just happens to be an irish actor as well but a, the, a naked scene and to drill him on that is cringy and inappropriate and we are not much to cringe when it comes to sexuality but how do you feel about when you hear this yeah, that was completely inappropriate. Just because he's gay, they want to ask him these questions about another man's body on a red carpet where he's promoting his the film that he's in. They didn't even ask him about anything about the film that he's in. That is a cardinal sin when it comes to a red carpet. And as far as promotion is doing, I don't understand how this person even got on the red carpet because I think that this is completely unprofessional. And uh, very cringy, like you said, and just inappropriate. You don't ask somebody about their friend or their friend's body in front of them. You don't know this person. You don't know what they're going through or what they want to say on the red carpet about anything sexual. It's, 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 this is work at the end of the day. You should, that, there's a line that should not be crossed. And I, and I am like aghast. And I like that you said, too, asking another gay guy just because someone's gay to comment on a naked man male scene. Like, of course, it just puts us like, of course, the gays are going to want to talk about that. Right. Yeah. And it just Dick. further puts us in a box. And I love talking about dicks, but Me if too. I we was there to promote my I know, right? <laughs> if I was there to promote my movie, I would not, I would want to promote my movie. I would not, I would think it was very strange if somebody asked me about a dick while I was promoting my movie. Exactly. Hey there. So I want to talk to you about sex. I know I do this all the time, but seriously, I think I speak for most men when I say we want to have better sex. I know I do, especially this week while I'm on the Vakaya Caribbean cruise having nightly fun in the red light district. Oh my goodness, it's so much fun here. Well, here's the issue. Most erection pills can contain a lot of unhealthy chemicals and, you know, unregulated ingredients. And then you combine that with unhealthy doses and the whole combination can be a risky and could lead to health problems. Plus, do you really want to rely on a chemical every time you have sex? Well, the goal is to have more hot gay sex, not rely on a risky pill, right? That's why we're partnering with Joy Mode. Whether you're looking to spice up your intimate moments or increase confidence in bedroom, or let's just say the red light district like I am, Joy Mode makes all natural and science-backed supplements dedicated to helping men perform better across their core functions. I'm really excited to tell you all about their Joy Mode's Sexual Performance Booster. I mean, I've been using it all week here at the Red Light District. Their trademark product, the Sexual Performance Booster, is every guy's solution for increased blood flow, firmness, stamina, and performance. It's basically a pre-workout, but for sex. Here's what I've been doing all week. They come in these little packets that you simply mix with about six to eight ounces of water. So I've been taking it a couple of hours before I head out to have some fun. And you can take it 45 minutes up to five hours before sex. 
Designed to support erection quality, firmness, and sex drive, it contains clinically supported doses of arginine nitrate, L-citrulline, Panax ginseng, and vitamin C. Just knowing Joy Mode has good ingredients puts me at E. I've said it before, I'm a man of a certain age, and I don't want to put unknown healthy things into my system. You know what I want to put inside me. Well, I just feel better knowing that with Joy Mode, I can have the confidence to focus on the joys of great sex and have fun. So here's the thing. Redefine your intimacy, your sex, and go to usejoymode.com for 20% off and use our code TAGS, T-A-G-S. That's 20% off, free shipping with the code TAGS, T-A-G-S, at usejoymode.com. Ingredients with integrity. Joy Mode. Well, let's keep spilling the tea because a recent guy posted on Reddit of a OnlyFans star, Jonah Wheeler. So essentially, a guy went on a Reddit thread to say he just had the most fantasy sex ever when he had sex on the dance floor at a sex party uh, re- uh, recently, and he said he was way hotter in real life than on camera, taller, cuter, more muscular. Camera's not flattering for most folks, I guess. And he said, funny that porn stars need random sex too. You'd think they'd get enough on set. And then he said, I can die now. Well, a lot of people were pushing like, who was it? Who was it? Which he then responded to it was Jonah Wheeler, an OnlyFans star who describes himself on his profile as a goofball horn dog who's dirty, friendly, and always having a good time. And look him up because he's sexy and he sounds really cool. Well, lo and behold, Jonah got wind of this and decided to jump on the comment section. And first of all, would you be mortified if you let the name out of the box and then that person found out about it. Well, it happens on the show all the time, by the way. Sometimes <laughs> we don't use names, about... though. We don't exactly. I was talking about. Uh, I'll I'll read what he said in a second. Oh, okay. but I was. You and I were at the Eagle recently, and I was making a comment about a friend, and it was so all about Valentine's Day. It couldn't have been more you know, harmless, but my friend was listening to that episode and said, Oh my God, you should have given, I should have given you a promo code because he works at a restaurant and (laughs) you just have to be aware that, you know, our friends do listen to our show sometimes and you can't, but we don't get names. We're really good with that. Oh yeah. This person succumbed to that. Well, Jonah got wind of it and said, ah, hey, I have no idea who this is, but it's nice reading kind things about me. I have a fair amount of off-camera sex, especially at sex party. It it recharges me. Think of it like musicians. Playing a concert is thrilling and emotional, but you still also got to jam. You have to have a jam session because it's a different way of interacting with a thing you love. I've been paid to go to an event once or twice, but they've been ones where me and another performer did a live show. Fucking anybody else isn't part of the job. That's just because I like to. So he got a lot of praise because of how nice he was. He didn't get mad that he was outed. I'm sure it only promoted Jonah more to those Redditors. Mm -hmm. And now it's on the gay press. So more people now know about Jonah. So it only boosted him up. And I think this is a really great thing. And people do forget that even when you do things that you love, but for work and get a paycheck, that you also have a different life outside of it. What do you think about this? Oh, yeah, you definitely have to. If you do something that you love for work, you have to explore it. Because if you do it just for work, then it becomes just that. It becomes work. So I've, I'm glad that Jonah is finding <laughs> happiness in his hobbies outside of work. It's just lovely. I think that it's great. And I'm glad that he took this opportunity to spin it into something positive because it could have turned into something negative very quickly. Uh, I personally have had sex with a an OnlyFans creator on the dance floor once before, and it okay. was fantastic. <laughs> okay. I, I hope to do so again, and I'm not naming any names. If you want to know, you can just DM me, and we'll we'll discuss it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think we're all excited when you do meet, I mean, even on this cruise, 
not necessarily sex, but there's like I was with my friend getting a, a lunch break moment here and Alec Mappa walked by and you're just excited when you okay. see a celebrity, but then you see a, somebody that is actually your porn crush, or then you hook up with one of these and it's that much more hot, I think. And I think yeah. if you're in that world, like for example, we divulge a lot on this show about our sex lives. I currently have an only fans and you know, you just have to know when you're in that kind of work, which is fun, but it's work also, that it's part of the job, right? You are, it, it's not a fun show if you're not divulging your sexuality to the fullest. And of course, we have our things, we don't share everything, but yeah, we keep a few things to ourselves, but it's just kind of the name of the game. I mean, now if somebody was saying you were an asshole or you were a jerk to them, then that, you know, you got to be careful with stuff like that. But in general, it's exactly. like, yeah, it's only going to help you out. And yeah, it is such a tremendous ego boost to have sex with someone that A, does it for a living and B, can absolutely have anybody in this room and they think that you're attractive. So I think that for me personally, I was like walking around very proud with my chest out for four weeks. So it was great. <laughs> I love it. Well, there's a brand new show, and I may be asking for your Peacock sign-in login. Thank you so much. <laughs> and the show is called Couple to Thruples, and it's just what it sounds like. It's a brand new show. It's been on for a while, apparently, but it's a dating show where couples go on, and essentially, there's all of these people trying to get with the couples and the couple's job is to weed out and pick who they want to be in their thruple. Well, I looked at the trailer. It looks very messy, very hot, sexy. And I think there are six episodes in, but there's already been a ton of drama. Like I said, as you can imagine, fights, makeups, tearful confessions. One of the things in the trailer that I noticed that I wrote down was they have a, and this is probably while I watch it too, is while it sounds salacious and fun and drama, I love that it's bringing thruples and it's not just gay, it's straights in this series, but they have an expert, like a relationship expert that's on the show who's constantly putting things in perspective for the contestants. And one of the things she said about jealousy, she says that jealousy pertains to a person detecting a threat. And I think mm -hmm. that is such a powerful quote too, because right? jealousy, we all experience it, but it can be you feel threatened and i think she's going to give some words of wisdom on the show are you here for this show and you mentioned recently cody that you <laughs> could be open to a thruple are you going to watch this and maybe get on season two you know what this there, there is so much to unpack here <laughs> but first i want to say i knew <laughs> that you were going to bring up that i recently you said did not know. That <laughs> i did know i actually you sent me the story beforehand and then i looked at it and i was engrossed i was so into it i was ready I put the I put the show in my queue already for my Peacock. And yes, you can have the login. I am so ready to watch the show. It looks so drama filled. You know, I'm a messy bitch that lives for drama. And I just think that I knew that this was a setup. I think I knew that this was like, I think the universe set me up because I said it maybe like two weeks ago because and then this show comes out and we're talking about it. And it is so it looks so juicy. And I agree with you. I think that jealousy, this will actually help me watching the show as far as dealing with jealousy and dealing with all types of things. And maybe, yes, I could be in a thruple. This is something that it intrigues me. Uh, I would want to be in a closed thruple, of course. But, right. you know, if something like that comes into play, then I definitely am going to explore the options but if not, then I'll be perfectly happy with just one boyfriend and a, and maybe a cat or something like that. But this show looks so good. I cannot wait to get back and we can discuss this. Yes, it's, I, I'm definitely watching it and I can't wait to see it because I just think it's bringing more awareness to different types of relationships. Of course, it's going to be drama filled mm -hmm. and we will be here for that. But um, 
would I be into a thruple? I think I've been, I've met thruples several times and I think it takes a lot of work, but I am in awe of them and I think it's really cool. I probably should get over my thinking that it's really cool factor. Like they're an anomaly when they're just living their lives. Right. And we should normalize it. So I think shows like this will normalize and we won't put them on this sort of pedestal as like, that is so cool because they're just living their daily lives, making this work. It's working for them. And, you know, we could treat them more like this is their relationship and that's really cool. So I'm looking out for the normalization of various types of relationships. And if you can make a, a reality show about this, I'm here for it. So yes, let's talk about it and see what we think and let's talk about it. Like we talk about drag race. It'll be fun. Okay. Right? I can't wait. Yes. Well, let's give a little bit of advice like we like to. And this one came from a Reddit thread What asking the question, is getting fucked every day too much? Hmm, sounds like just enough to me, but sounds like my <laughs> schedule like, no. right now on the cruise. But <laughs> they wrote the question, hey, so I have been in a relationship for a year and a half and my boyfriend is a DTF every day. What does DTF stand for, Cody? Down, down to fuck. Oh, thank you so much. So basically, I've been <laughs> getting fucked nearly every day for a year and a half, and I'm a little worried that douching daily might be harmful for me. What do you think? Also, I worry about my hole getting loose. I mean, it's already loose, sir, which I used to be conscious of, but it was bound to happen, I guess. If you have any tips on how to stay tight, that would be helpful. Am I worrying over nothing? I don't think he's worrying over nothing. I think you can get fucked. I think the douching matter, and there were some comments in the comments section that pointed to the reality of douching can be too much. I mean, we've had Dr. Goldstein on the show before, and it can, if you, especially if you're just using water, and depending on the size of the bulb that you're using to douche or those saline solutions that aren't always the best for you, they can really... Uh, just do havoc to the lining of your membrane and where natural mucus would you know would come about to help you with fucking if it could you could lose that and that would not be a good thing and so i think somebody pointed out to the fact that you know you might want to consider like eating more fiber a more fiber rich diet and also which bulks up not to be gross but your poop and you can take things like various supplements like um there's a bunch of them out there dr goldstein's has his and there's a bunch of them that you can take where you wouldn't be douching every day but i think lucky for you you are getting fucked every day and i think that that's right. nothing to be you know it's a good thing as long as you're enjoying it too what do you think and what advice would you give yeah, I agree with you. I do not think that it's too much. I would aim for it twice a day, honestly, if it was Oh, me. wow. <laughs> but I'm not and at the bottom, so fucking, I'm not. <laughs> actual fucking or just sex? I mean, I'm DTF, too. I can't, I, I can't deny. Okay. I'm, yeah. I um, I think that he's he has a uh, reason or he has a... a a mindset in order to be concerned about something like this because you you know you want to keep it tight and right for your mate so i definitely get that the douching definitely should probably stop at this moment and he should take some of those supplements fiber pills things of that nature to help uh, clean them out more succinctly and more uh, just easily and i think that once you're in a relationship for me i think that the douching should kind of go away honestly because this is the person that you're spending your life with. So why does it matter if shit happens, honestly? So <laughs> I personally, I, you know, I'm dating somebody and I'm in a relationship with them. I don't think I would be really concerned about it. It's going to happen. You're fucking somebody in the ass. So that's where poop comes out of. So you shouldn't be able, you shouldn't hold that in such a regard to, to make you want to stop dating somebody for that reason. And my, I agree. And my last piece of advice that I think if, you know, if you're concerned with these kind of things, uh, you know, we mentioned Dr. Goldstein and I've seen him recently and not everyone has access to get to New York to see Dr. Goldstein, but you could find a proctologist, hopefully 
your insurance would cover it. But I think what's really good about that, um, in my consultations with Dr. Goldstein, when you are more sexually active, and particularly you're talking about fucking in particular, this is somebody that you want to be able to have these honest com- conversations with. They can actually mm-hmm. look down there periodically and see if everything's working right and everything's going right. They can be- make recommendations for you. They, there's even things we've had other people on the show, Dr. Uh, Chris Bustamante, who you can, there's treatments if you want to, to tighten that area up. And, but it might not be as loose as you think. And a proper proctologist can actually look at that. And one that you feel comfortable with that hopefully is of our community can really, you can have those open conversations with. So that would be my other recommendation is to layer that into your, you know, your doctor plan, because that just, seeing somebody on a regular basis and by regular i mean it could be every three months every six months if you will and when you are and and you can be honest this is the sexual what we're having on a weekly basis how does everything look down there am i you know and they'll give proper recommendations yeah i couldn't agree with you more and it's just I think a big factor for me as far as this conversation is concerned is the level of comfort that you feel with your partner. So if you're with your partner and you're comfortable, of course, the whole douching and cleaning out part is going to be lessened by your comfortability with your partner. And likewise, if you're a little bit loose, personally, I like it a little bit loose sometimes. Okay. And I... All right. <laughs> and I think that that as long as you're comfortable with your partner and you share a bond and love, then it's not really going to matter, honestly, at the end of the day. Right. Exactly. Uh, you know, somebody recently on a Reddit thread was asking the difference between cruise bars and saunas. How are cruising bars different to bathhouses, aside from not having a literal sauna? Well, they said basically just like a sauna bathhouse, but without the steam rooms. Um they found a night at a cruise bar and they wanted to know how it differs. And I would say much of the difference is I like a cruise bar more. A lot of people in the comment section posted that you can get cocktails at a cruise bar where you can't at a sauna. Uh, The other part I like about cruise bars too is particularly the one that we know in New York is, or there's a couple of them. You can kind of structure your night where maybe you want to get a cocktail, maybe you want to talk to your friends or new friends, then you want to go cruise and have some fun. There's a lot of bars in Europe as well, where you can do that whole phenomenon, you can go into the back room when you want to. Sometimes there's dance bars and in conjunction with the cruising and the socializing. And I personally like that whole structure of a night, it just works for me. Saunas, I feel, is a little bit more work and you've got to really check in with a locker. It's a little bit more of a commitment to me. And, you know, it doesn't it's a little bit more one note for me. But, hey, um, you can have fun at all of them. What's your preference, Cody? And how do you think they're different? I agree with you. I I honestly think that I prefer saunas just a little bit more, even though you can I I have fun in both of them, honestly. But I think that saunas for me, the a difference from my perspective is that everybody in the sauna is already naked, right? They have their towel on, they're walking around, they're looking to see what's going on. There's a steam room there, which also is beneficial. And also there are private rooms in a sauna. So you can take that time to go. If you want to be a little bit more intimate or private, then you can go in the room and you can just do your thing over there. So for me, I enjoy the saunas for that experience. And I go to the cruise bars to have that experience with my friends and maybe to have a little fun on the side and have some cocktails, a uh, cock and tails along with my cocktails. <laughs> okay. Yes, exactly. And yeah, I mean, I also think, um, saunas can be fun, like especially internationally too. So some of them oh, in yeah. Europe, you can actually get even food and you can, a friend of mine was telling one in Lisbon that he said this is one of his favorite saunas and they've got a cute little cafe. There's a bar. 
he kind of props up his laptop and he works from home so you can do work and be in your towel and when you see somebody you like pack up the laptop and go to a private room and rinse and repeat literally i think the other thing about cruise bars often is when you go to the play spaces you need to always be aware too that there's going to be a lot more group touch and group play which i can get into at times but you might want a more one-on-one -on -one experience and like you mm -hmm. said the saunas offer a room a private room often that you can go with whom you picked out and have that one-on-one -on -one hot sex moment versus being in a whole communal environment so there's benefits to both so I just yeah, think definitely. you got to like the right one. Yeah, exactly. Okay, let us know how you weigh in. Do you like the bathhouses more or the cruise bars? Or give us your weigh in on that. And lastly, just a couple of exciting things. Greece legalized same-sex marriage, and the gays are having a kiki. Yay. And you would think because of Mykonos and other parts, Athens, plenty of gay bars, that they would have had this instilled but surprisingly because it's the first christian orthodox majority country to legalize same-sex marriage that it's about time and so it's landmark it was a landmark consensus and they voted in this historic move so this is really exciting and congratulations greece for legalizing same-sex marriage and also some good news well couple good news is I am currently, like I said, on the Vakaya Caribbean cruise, huge fan of Vanessa Williams, and was excited to see that she will be performing two shows this Thursday on, and I cannot wait to see her. And I know she has a new album in the works, and I'm hoping she's going to do one single from that, but she's just one of my favorite people. And other good news for I'm Vanessa so Williams. <laughs> I know, but I just read this today. Vanessa Williams is going to star in The Devil Wears Prada as Miranda Priestly. It's a musical, so and right. it's going to be on London's West End. Music will be by Elton John, and I need to go to London. Anywhere starting next October, it will go through May 31st of 2025. How exciting. And there's a cute video of Vanessa reenacting Miranda Priestley's moment when she's coming through the elevator and putting her bags down. It's amazing. Oh, I'm so here for this. And with new right. music from Elton John, uh, probably won't get a preview of any of that on this show that I'm going to see. But what do you think of this casting? So excited. I saw the preview for it the other day and I couldn't. It uh, makes me want to move to London. I cannot. I love her. I love that movie. This is going to be fantastic. Exactly. So excited. So, yes. And I will post pictures of Vanessa Williams this week on my Instagram, which you can follow, plus more sexy photos from the Vakaya Caribbean cruise. You can follow me on Instagram at I am underscore Steve V. I also have an OnlyFans page, which I'm going to be posting new content this week, as well as every week, really, it's OnlyFans.com forward slash Sexy Poppy Steve V. You can follow my co-host, Cody. He's a life coach at KMD Coaching. Also on the gram, follow him, Sexy Pictures, of course, at Mr. Maurice. Mr. Maurice. And Cody, great talking and catching up. I can't, oh, yeah. I miss you. I miss you too, boo, but we'll be back together very soon. Exactly. And in the meantime, let's continue to have hot gay hot gay sex. sex. Yeah.